Over the past 20 plus years, freestyle skiing has been progressing at a crazy rate. This progression has been amazing to watch and has inspired me greatly. But you can't help but think if competitive skiing judging criteria stays the same, and if the rate of ski progression stays the same, then what will competitive free skiing look like in 20 years from now? What's he got for his last attempt? 21 -60. What if there was a different type of competition format? One that could take into account more creative and different types of tricks. Well, three professional free skiers, James Woodsy, coming in this time, going left side, triple cork, Oystein Bratton, on this last jump, a switch, left side, double cork, 14, and Ferdinand Dahl have started their own competition series called the Jib League. We'll be showing you how the Jib League works by going to the first stop in Innsbruck, Austria. Okay, so this is my ride to the competition, and we're gonna get up there and we're gonna get ready to compete for day one of the Jib League. So what happens is there's a jam session, I think it's 90 minutes. The Jib League takes place over several days, consisting of three jam sessions. They film the whole thing. Oh. Then at night, you watch back the hour of skiing. Oh. And then each rider who's involved in the event picks their top three skiers from that jam session. You are able to place your vote anonymously using your phone. After the end of these three jam sessions, whichever skier who receives the most amount of votes is crowned the champion and wins 10,000 euros. The winner in exceptional fashion was <laughs> Let's look at the first pillar of Jib League's format, which is the open qualification process. The open sessions are a chance for anybody to come and have the opportunity to compete against the best park skiers in the world. As a non-invited rider, I will be entering the open session to try and earn a spot for the pro sessions. De ska annonsera nu vilka som ska få med på veckan. Det är förmodligen typ den största dagen i livet för någon här nu. Potentiellt. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. The standard was mental, so yeah. First person is uh, Alex in the red jacket. <laughs> The next person whose name we don't know was wearing the electric pants and did a flip onto the rail. <laughs> People, I do know their names, but should not go unannounced how epic they are. And they are Alex Hackle, Ryan Stevenson, Tom yeah! Greenway, and Mark yeah! Long yeah! Accessibility is key to a thriving competition scene. The Jib League provides a vital opportunity that is currently not available elsewhere for up and coming skiers to get exposure and a shot to show their ability to a wider audience. Let's discuss the next pillar of the Jib League, the jam session format. This allows for skiers to showcase more of their skiing ability as the format allows for more tries and punishes less for mistakes, encouraging skiers to try more creative or progressive tricks than they would in a traditional two run best run counts competition format. Was in a slope style run. Well, you have to do one trick on it, and you gotta choose wisely. 
you got to choose wisely to get the right points on that one. According to the criteria to that they the have. Criteria? So maybe you're going to go fast. You're just going to bind three spots, yeah. bind two. Looking to be amazing and when you do a jam session on it, you gotta show different stuff. And now it's time to go judge. The backbone of the Jib League judging format is its subjectivity. It's 100% rider judged, and there's no judging criteria besides to vote for who you believe skied the best. This completely subjective judging format allows the world's best skiers to decide which direction the competition takes. You'll have your first winner and your second winner and they both get two points each. And then your first runner up and your second runner up will both get one point each. Now that we've placed our votes for the first session, it's time to get back up on hill for day two. But before, let's talk again with Remco, who's a certified fish judge, to see what he thinks of the Jib League's judging format. You're a certified uh, fish judge. I am. <laughs> How does this, uh, when you judge uh, the video of you at night, uh, do you use any of those skills? No. <laughs> I go full subjective. Skiing is an uh, expression of yourself. And uh, it's obviously not really uh, made for ranking people. And as soon as you want to rank people, you have to accept that it's not going to be perfect. But it's... Yeah, that's it. Går det i Jibligen än så länge? Det var grejt alltså. Lang bakke var det. Vilken dag är det idag? Sista dag. Onsdag? Onsdag. Vad har hänt igår kväll för Tormod? Best trick. Vad vann du? Jag vet inte. 200 euro tror jag. Tror jag. Hörte jag. Jag har en fråga. Uh -huh. Vad behöver du några sax till? <laughs> uh, jag ska fixa den här härligt. Oh. Någonting hade för mig att det var någonting med stil att göra. Ja, ja, ja. Sessions are supposed to start 11 every day. Det är inte när vi startar. Nej, det är inte när vi startar. Så like 12. One. Yeah, I want to. So close. Whether you believe that the Jib League is the future of competition skiing, or you just love seeing the skiing that happens at the Jib League, you can't help but to be impressed that three pro skiers were able to create a competition that is able to provide an alternative path for the next generation of skiers. It's proof that participation in your community can lead to creating big changes. Third place, this time season two, it's in Innsbruck, it's Kai Mala! Yeah! So please give it up for Nordgata. It's episode one of season two of Jib League. And the winner in exceptional fashion was Tormod. Does Torm know? Yeah. <laughs> 
If you enjoyed this video, go into YouTube, type in the Jib League, give them a follow, and stay up to date on all the competitions. Or click the video below to see a full-length documentary about Jib League called The League.